I think Pietro wanted to start. Hello, so I'll bring yeah. Pietro. Yeah, I kind of did want to start here a little bit um, because there has been uh, a rumor uh, started not long ago, uh, yesterday, uh, about uh, Operation Greenlight. And I do want to let people know Operation Greenlight is not valid. We did not release it. Drake did not release it. When the green light occurs, it will be found on our website at freedomrace.us. So I want to make sure everybody understands. If there is something posted, do not send it viral unless you confirm it through our website. Anyway, with that, that's about all I got. (laughs) So go ahead, Sam. Okay, good morning, everybody, and um, Drake, love your information, and sometimes when you answer a question, it's like Pandora's box, and I can get ten more questions, so I hope you're ready. Oh, it's not, I'm used to it. Okay, let's go to this one. I want to go back to Randy's interview to start with. And everybody that's listening to this interview, I would appreciate it if you would have a pen and paper. If there is a term that you don't know, write it down and go look it up. This is about everybody getting their own discernment, discovering their own truth, and keeping us in check. And the only way you can do that is if you're you're engaging, if you're participating and doing your own research. We only have a piece of the puzzle and the more pieces we put together, we can get a, a bird's eye view of what's actually transpiring. So get your pens and paper ready. All right, Drake, when you were interviewing with Randy, you made a comment about the um, black holes that were put into the underground bases and sucked out the reptilians. And on their way out, they said, this is non-interference. What are you doing? Um, yeah. Number one, I want to know why are the friendly ET Uh-oh. allowed to interfere? Mudsy, <laughs> we didn't get a lot of that. You broke out. Oh, my phone is there. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, we lost you with reptilians. They got sucked out, and on their way out, they mentioned non-interference. So I was wondering, why are the ETs, the friendly ones, allowed to help us now, if you know, or um, why did it take so long? Well, (laughs) uh, let's back this up just a hair. Uh, First of all, it's not uh, just reptilians. It's also uh, humans. Um, (laughs) Some of these bases are not just... uh, off-world uh, platforms. They're also uh, our stuff. Now, what you got to remember is that the military, some time ago, put together a program where they worked in conjunction with certain ETs to have superior uh, technologies. So that means that at the tr- appointed time and uh, somebody decided to disagree, they could zap you in the butt with a ray gun, basically. So, uh, the uh, non-interference directive was discussed, and the reason that they, the decision was made to interfere on that level was simply that some of the technology is far too advanced for what we have available to handle. So what that does is that puts the uh, ball in the uh, court of the person, uh, entities, people, angels, whatever you want to call them, that uh, do have the capability of uh, using the sweeper on these underground bases. Now, uh, the uh, full statement was something about uh, calling these uh, entities uh, tree-hugging hippies from space and what happened to the non-interferal, and off he gets sucked into wherever they're going with them. Gaga land, I guess. Uh, this is only a report that I heard. I don't have any first-hand intel other than what I just stated. So it's a combination of things. It's not a simplistic thing. And 
Um, apparently, we have uh, what would be called intervention on a level that uh, protects us from people who might have uh, superior uh, technologies and using those superior technologies as weaponry against the citizenry. In other words, this is going to be a peaceful operation whether anybody likes it or not, basically is the idea that I've gotten. So that's the answer to that question. Thank you. Um, we are seeing lots of reports, and I don't know if you can discuss this or not, um, about Chicago being evacuated, the Bilderbergs and the um, NATO coming to Chicago, and the federal government wants to evacuate Chicago. I have several issues with that. Number one, evacuating Chicago, and number two, what the heck is Bilderbergs and NATO doing coming here, and shouldn't they be arrested? Um, well, uh, first of all, uh, I doubt you're going to see an evacuation of Chicago. That's uh, an extraordinary undertaking, for one. Number two, um, the logistics don't fit. Now, areas around these people will be uh, sanitized, so to speak. Anybody that's questionable uh, gets to take a trip, either voluntarily or with assistance, as my uh, memory goes back to the days of uh certain uh, violence up there and riots and whatnot. So the other part is, is that uh, you do have a combination of what is called good and, and bad in all forms of society. Uh, you got uh, little bitty Hitlers that uh, reside in small towns. you got big ones that reside in big ones. Uh, you have a group of uh, people who are integral in the uh, problems that we have with our government, who are meeting with uh, certain portions of NATO, not the entire thing. Now, the North American Treaty Organization um, basically has been doing several things it shouldn't that were outside of its, uh, what it was supposed to, what supposed to be doing and what outside of its design. The uh, North American Treaty Organization was simply to secure the uh, uh, shores and countries with shores on the Atlantic Ocean. That was its, its original idea. That was expanded into military operation. Consequently, you got all this ring around the rosy. Now, the uh, usually the Billabergs, Billabergs are not... Uh, they don't broadcast their meetings. They don't want people to know. It's usually held in secret. Now, all of a sudden, they come out in the open. One of two things, and I'm going to suggest the latter of these two. Uh, first of all, they feel they're immune, and I don't think that applies anymore. My suggestion is that they do not feel the immunity and protection that they used to have because their financial powers have been uh, curtailed considerably, as well as their influential powers due to that financial uh, capability. The second part of this is is that uh, everything, and uh, I've mentioned this before, is a two-way street. That means that you can have a combination of what might appear nasty that also can be of extraordinary advantage to the good guys. Now, uh, these people have to get out of a vehicle or something in order to come into the building. Therefore, you know who they are, you get a picture, etc. Very simply, these things can be to our advantage. Then you know who to go pick up. So, uh, I don't think they're going to evacuate uh, Chicago. They've been making uh, practice runs with uh, the black choppers and all this other happy stuff. Uh, as an intimidation and scare tactic, we are still all powerful. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, to my way of thinking, um, these people are on, a, on the edge of losing their mind because of several things. One is that they can no longer hide anywhere on this planet. And the other thing is that they cannot get off the world to go and take their diseases or whatever you want to call their uh, philosophies of life to other places. And that's basically the answer to that one. Okay, this one's going to be tough. Um, I call them slither heads, the shapeshifters. Uh, to what my knowledge is is that they're very um, ruthless killers and they don't respect humanity at all. It's quite the opposite, which would make it very challenging for our military or for any human to actually approach them or arrest them. I was just curious if 
we are getting help from the friendly ETs to actually remove them off the planet, and we would not see them in any kind of global court. Uh, that's sort of correct. You also have to understand that we do have uh, certain elite special forces that have been trained to hunt these things. Now, there's a movie out right now called Priest. Anybody wants to know about that sort of ideology, and uh, it's a sci-fi flick uh, where uh, vampires and man, mankind go at it, okay? You will also give some of the basis for the special training necessary for an individual to be able to take these things on. It's not a good idea. They're faster, and they have extraordinary uh, telepathic powers, etc. So we are at a disadvantage. Now, at a certain distance, when they don't know we're there, you can start popping them off, and that's part of what is being uh, done presently. Uh, that's inside info that probably should have been out before, but it's one of the things I've been holding on to. Um, the reason I've been holding on to it is to make sure that we had a better advance time that to come up again was today. So that's basically the answer. Uh, you can take these things on if you know how to do it and you've had the training. If not, I would suggest that you watch and you'll, if you see them, Go back in the house. You don't have to hide necessarily. Just keep a rather powerful weapon in hand just in case they decide to visit. And don't worry about it. Generally, they're running around loose. Uh, they may be a part of a group of people, uh, as you said, shape-shifting. Um, whether people realize it or not can take something that's ugly in terms of what we would perceive as ugly and make it look like some regular everyday person. So... Um problem with that is they can only hold those uh, positions for a short time. Under extreme duress, they lose it. They don't have that capability as uh, much as they'd like. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, it would be, if uh, there was an army of these things, that would create a problem uh, worse than the one that uh, we have now. Problem is, is that they are now being hunted, which is a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, turning the tables kind of thing. And that's your answer for that one. And let me say something before we get st before you go on. There will be no phone calls taken for quite a while, so if you call in, your phones get dropped. Is that clear? Thank you. I'm back to watching. Okay, I didn't know if it was me. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, one of my concerns is the farmers. Um, they've been suppressed. They've had to go to court for bogus um, claims. The dark cabal has stolen their land, their machinery, and anything else they could do, even their heritage seeds that were passed down from generation to generation. In the plan that you know about, is there some kind of... Um, precautions, but protection and also assistance for our farmers? Uh, yes, there is. Now, two things are going to happen uh, as this thing starts working itself out. Uh, one of those is a uh, reemergence of manufacturing here in this country, and the other uh, general intention or uh, focus is going to be on farming. Um, I'm going to stress this now because uh, it deals directly with it. Um, on the website, our website, freedomarines.us, you'll find a thing called localization. People do not understand the importance of that uh, system. It provides a combination of both helping each other with simplistic things. Somebody can't do something, you help them with it, uh, or they need something, you may provide it, and, you know, okay, come on over and, uh, you know, hold me a row and we're done, we're even, or however you want to work that if somebody don't like charity. The other part of it is is protection. And this happened in Ruidoso, New Mexico. It's online. You can check it. Uh, the local sheriff there had a problem with the uh, feds coming in saying, you can't do this and we're going to do that and et cetera. The uh, sheriff said, no. One of the people on the sheriff's uh, detail, a deputy, happened to be a member of the local militia. He called the local militia and said, we need some help. 
And all of a sudden, some 15 feds were uh, basically confronted with uh, 130 armed people who uh, weren't quick to pull the trigger. There wasn't a shot fired. The sheriff asked the feds if they wanted to go to jail or if they wanted to leave, that those were the two options. And they wanted to argue about it, and he said, it ain't up for discussion. Those are your two options. Either we take you to jail or you leave. The feds decided after seeing seeing uh, guns come out of a whole lot of trees that it might be a good idea to have lunch elsewhere. Now, this is confrontary. This is direct stand down, or you stand somebody down because they're outnumbered and outmatched. Uh, I'm not recommending violence. What I am recommending Drake, we lost is you. everybody get your groups together, get a phone tree going. When you see something funky, call Drake, Drake you're media. still here. Have somebody who has time and capability to keep an eye out and make sure they got a cell phone and a radio. Tell them that when they see something funky getting ready to happen, they call and it's investigated. The thing that the bad guys are intending to do is cause as much chaos and uh, problems for everybody as they can. There are several ways to do that. One is to blow up things like uh, bridges, cell phone towers, uh, towers that support uh, major uh, electrical feeds to, to towns and things of this nature. It would be a good idea. And I've advised all of the militias to put a scout, uh, recon, lookout, whatever you want to call it, out there with a radio and a cell phone, make sure they've got contact. And the call does this. They call for reinforcements. The reinforcements call the sheriff, and they call a phone tree for the civilians. So everybody that is not directly involved can make sure they got the, the shotgun handy in case somebody decides to visit. The militia is deployed to whatever the problem area is, and these people are confronted. Just that simple. Now, uh, somebody wants to come in and take your uh, farming equipment. What are they going to do when 150 people show up armed and tell them no? With the sheriff standing in the middle of it telling them that's not a good idea unless you want to go to jail or leave, I'd suggest you make a decision on this. This is the sort of confrontation that is going to be become more common, and I mean a lot more common than it was. It, the situations that come up like that is not the, the time frame for those is not going to last very long. But it's a good idea to have uh, to be prepared to take things, take matters into your own hands by, and I'm not saying take take the law into your own hands. I said take matters into your own hands by support or backup of local law enforcement. The sheriff does have the capability legally to enforce the laws in your county. This means that uh, each one of the people that would show up uh, become deputized. And bingo, uh, you then have a force to reckon with. This is not going, as I said, this is, these things are going to become more commonplace. The other part of this is that uh, certain sheriffs have been replaced and are and or are being replaced. Anyone, and I'm going to make sure, I hope everybody, all the sheriffs are listening or somebody that knows one, if you are confronted with losing your arrest, this is the sheriff, uh, or being put out of office, you have the right, because you have a time frame of 30 to 90 days, somewhere in that area, that you're still the sheriff. As soon as you hear or get wind of this, your best effort, and I mean this is going to bring it to a head quick, is to go down to whomever has said that you were going to be uh, put out of office or you were not going to have arrest powers, arrest that individual or the city council or whomever it might be and put them in jail. There are several charges you can hold them on. Immediately contact the federal government and say, we got a problem. Uh, the feds have certain powers even beyond what the sheriff does with his permission. So you can you can bring things to a head. To me, I would uh, um, also, uh, at the time you start getting ready to do something of this nature, call the press. 
You want to make as much news and let everybody know what's going on as possible. Somebody says a cop is not a, is no longer a cop is full of it. It's not that easy. It's also not that legal. Now, when somebody interferes with the sheriff, he's inter- he is obstructing justice generally. So <laughs> these are the kinds of charges that, can, that uh, somebody who says so, and it doesn't matter if it's the governor, the attorney general, it doesn't matter. You can arrest them. And this will bring this matter to a head. Now, there are several ways that uh, this can be looked at, and I'm not going into legalistics, but that's the basic answer to this. Localization, where your neighbors all pull together. That guy that has a, a dairy farm uh, doesn't have to worry about the, about a raid that will close him down. A guy that's growing uh, organic goats also can be protected. Now, here's the reason for that, and this is very simple. Just because they found an excuse in terms of farming does not mean they won't come after your house and you next. So this is why this is very and critically important. Get together with people. Get it going. Get it together. Get it together so that it is uh, structured correctly, so that you've got the quick quick uh, communications, and make sure that you've got some people that are willing to uh, stand up with you and move in that direction. That's the answer to that question. Okay, I want to take that um, two steps further. Number one is, I was actually talking to an ex-judge yesterday, and he commented that there are people in prison that should Hello. not be in prison, Sam? that he made a mistake, we keep dropping and that you. a lot of judges done. have done this with their rulings, well, while we're waiting and for, that they for, feel like they've we made didn't up. Hear anything. We didn't hear anything you said. You dropped out. Okay, do you hear it now? Sam, do the other thing, and we'll do that. We'll set that up right now. Right up. Just take a minute. Okay. Um, let me see here. Drake, 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 there seems to be concern. Um, um, people seem to think they're going to get individual notifications whenever we uh, put out operation, you know, whenever we get the green light. Um, but that's not, everybody's not getting individual. We've compiled various media outlets who have uh who are on our um to be notified list and they will go viral with it. Folks, hang on, we're having uh hamster techie problems here this morning. Okay, joining the call. Welcome back. We the, the hamsters are having a ball today. I apologize for that, folks. But in uh, one minute, we're going to take a four-minute break. Okay, that sounds good. Anyways, before the before we this all went down, um, Drake, I'm going to reiterate what we had said, what I said before. Um, we have been getting um, uh, emails and such. Yeah, there is apparently a strong misconception people seem to think that we are going to individually email every single person when there is an alert to be given that is not the case it will be posted on our website and we have been compiling a um, list of various media sources who have asked to be contacted when the green light is given and they will uh, help to let everybody know. And I know, Dave, you've already said that whenever we have something really, really important, we can get on at any time. So I wanted to make that very clear. That's absolutely correct. Okay. Hey. So with that said. <laughs> with that said, we're going to take a 3 minute and 46 second break so Drake can get a fresh cup of coffee and I can calm down to a slight panic. Okay. Okay, let's go back to the judge. Um, I had a conversation with one yesterday, and he said that there were many people in prison that shouldn't be there because a judge had made a mistake. 
And their way of reconciling it is writing a letter once a person gets out of jail to help them get a job. To me, that doesn't seem justified. So what no. what what can people do about the judges that are making illegal rulings? Well, there's two ways to go on that. I would suggest holding the judge directly, personally responsible for uh, uh, incorrect application of the law. That's what they're supposed to do is apply the law. Then they're supposed to pu- apply what they understand of the situation or circumstances involving whatever the violation, as they might call it, would be. In terms of uh, just writing a letter, uh, I'm going to suggest that's not good enough, that the record needs to be expunged. In other words, it's not just closed like you would seal the records of a juvenile, but actually is stricken from all records. Then that person is free to go on their merry way, and if there's any question, then the judge should uh, always be available to answer questions on that basis. That then would rectify that situation. My okay. next concern, yes, my next concern, let's take it to the police, because the police, and not all policemen are bad, I want to say that, make it very clear, but there are some that are doing things like um, tasering people to death or um, being inappropriate, taking them into custody, what have you. Um, what could the people you broke do? Out. What can the people do to protect Oh, my goodness. The... It looks like we've lost Muggsy again here. Well, I'm here. I can hear you guys. That. Yes, it is. It is. Um, I can hear you guys. Anyways, well, we didn't hear you at all. What about the police? Yeah. What about the police that are acting inappropriately? Is there anything as far as can you get deputized or what can people do to protect themselves from corrupt police officers? Well, first of all, uh, my suggestion would be to uh, uh, make formal complaints to the state level law enforcement. What this does, this involves the FBI and other people directly in whatever uh, transpired. That's first. It also uh, causes the action to be um, investigated. Um, if anybody has witnesses, uh, etc., get their statement uh, that they saw the policeman being doing things that were not right. Now, the the funny games is this: the policemen state that the use of what they call non-lethal weaponry, specifically tasers, uh, comes under self-protection. That's all well and good, so long as there is justifiable reason for that. The justifiable reason is a threaten, a, th- a threat, a threatening manner, and specifically with a weapon. Whenever a person is outside of that parameter, then you're supposed to take about 12 or 14 or 25 officers, or whatever it takes, and you simply gang tackle the turkey, put it in cuffs, and this is restraint so that they cannot harm themselves or other people, and you take him down and put him in a padded room if that's what it takes. Now, a lot of people want to take the idea of citizen rights to an extreme and uh, actually uh, physically assault the police. This is not a cool idea. This needs to quit. Now, as that danger is mitigated, in other words, if people are just standing around and they arbitrarily pick somebody, that needs to be video recorded. That needs to be uh, witnessed. At that point, then the policeman is guilty of a crime. And you do not have to abide by what would be called a police inquiry in the matter. You need to go down and file a uh, an affidavit that states or stipulates uh, truth in a cause. That cause will go along with whatever arrest record or incident report that the police make. When you have substantial evidence to the contrary, especially video or pictures where there's no reason 
for the action taken, then that policeman, just like everybody else, can be held responsible for what they do. In the case of killing someone, that's at minimum manslaughter. This also applies to uh, the toasters they used to give away at banks when you open an account. It blew up and killed mom. That is a literal physical crime of, at minimum, manslaughter. And the uh, this problem uh, has been going on since the 50s. It's not been addressed. This is why I suggested that whenever a sheriff... Uh, cannot perform his duties because the attorney general says he can't arrest somebody or wants to remove him from office or whatever the excuse might be, arrest those individuals so that this stops. This then gives the police two things. It gives them real legal standing, for one, and the second part of it is that is going to garner a lot of respect from a lot of people. In short, there have been incidences not very many, this is beginning, where other policemen have been taking cops, I'm talking about their buddies, into custody for extraordinary violations. That can be tasering, that can be a lot of things, but uh, uh, there's beatings, there's uh, one incident where uh, all they did was fire the cop, and he killed somebody. I mean, shot him. Uh, these things have got to, got to quit. The uh, basis to remedy the situation is twofold. One is that the police need to understand that uh, the job they've been tasked to do may not be as such legal according to their actions. The second part of this is that if their actions are appropriate and they are correct, they'll find that citizens will actually help hold the guy down while they put the cuffs on him. This is not uncommon. And the working between the police and the citizenry is just as critical, as I said, in localization. So what you've got to do is follow the bad cops around. There are ways to find out what uh, what their duties are. There are ways to find out where they are assigned. And simply make sure that they, uh, when they... Uh, go to beating somebody up just because they're there or they feel like they want to play King Kong or the badge and the gun goes to their head or whatever their excuse might be, you got a video, you got witnesses, and you can prove it. You get a few of those, at the very least, the badge and the gun goes. That's the very least. Generally, the police side with the police. So this is why I do not um, suggest allowing a police inquiry but that you actually prefer uh, charges against the individual. That will solve the problem, and that's the answer to that one. What about the guys that, or women um, that have molestation charges? Some of the molestation charges are bogus, and then again, we have people that are molesters living one block away from a school. How can that be remedied? Um, well, um, bogus charges are difficult. Um, I would, uh, I would suggest that, uh, there needs to be a combination of better proofs in terms of a, a case where someone says they were molested or sexually assaulted in some form or another. That's going to be difficult. Now, the basis goes to this. If you have any physical evidence, save it. Any kind of a jar will do for liquids, period. Number two, uh, living too close to uh, schools, as I understand it, is forbidden under the uh, sexual predator laws. Um, if they've got no place to live in that area, then they need to move. Just that simple. Now, I don't see any special accommodations for someone who is truly a sexual predator, uh, no special accommodation. Uh, in other words, I don't care if you've got a, if it's the only job you can find right now, you're going to go uh, to a place where it is available for you to be so that you're not within striking distance of a school, etc. The um, problems all arise going to proofs of uh, what actually happened. 
Now, some cases where, and I'll give you an example, two underage people get together uh, consentingly. And uh, at the time that that person turns a certain age, they can be uh, charged with or listed on criminal registries. Uh, these are not the type of crimes that can be uh, used in that manner. And there's one uh, case right now where this exact thing happened, and the uh, person has been maligned because they were put on this registry. And they're suing for a combination of damages, not only to be removed, because they already requested that. They removed it. He got another copy, and there he is again. So there's a lot of things that need to be taken care of. And all of these little problems, they have to be worked out in two different ways. One, according to the area, because you have different lifestyles. The city's not going to be the same as the country, et cetera. So you have to work these things out within, within that perspective. But also, you need to make sure, I mean, if you hear somebody uh, is dirty doing uh, whatever, they're getting paid to look the other way, they're dealing drugs or whatever, and they are in law enforcement, uh, get some evidence. You might have to go out and lay in the bushes in the rain or something in order to get a video of them exchanging envelopes with the wrong people or whatever. But these things, over a period of time, stack up. You get three or four charges against that individual and you let the uh, people who are in charge of making sure the police are uh, doing their job correctly know about this and provide copies of the evidence to them, they will investigate. I have had uh, several officers removed when I was uh, residing in the state of Florida uh, in varying ways. Some of them left town, some of them retired, there's a variety of things that uh, transpired. So it can be done, um, and there's a variety of ways to, to go about that. So that's basically your answer to those. I want to give you a moment to bring us up to date if there is any new updates about what's been going on as far as the arrest or um, preparations there, too. Well, I'm going to say everything's a two-way street. As far as being definitive about the arrest, I'm not going to do that. Um, there are uh, the beginnings of the things that I've discussed uh, on the uh, different radio shows that have already transpired. Now, people are aware to some extent, if you're not, get online and look it up. Uh, Europe uh, is going crazy. The reason they're going crazy is two reasons. They do not have the funds to back the currency known as the euro. They also have an extraordinary, staggering, impossible to pay back debt. Uh, this is where you have what's called a consumerism form of banking. This means that you have to go and acquire new funds to replace the old and to pay off those who had investments that are coming due to be paid. It's a Ponzi scheme, literally. This is the basic structure of one. Then uh, to go along with that, you've got some extraordinary maneuvers here. Um, we've got a Northcom maneuver uh, scheduled between the between May 2nd and 9th in six different states. So seeing uh, military convoys wouldn't seem out of place because it's a training exercise. However, it could be the good guys putting their troops in place. You don't know, and you won't until it's time. And this is the other problem with this. Now, as far as furthering things, um, the uh, legalistics involved uh, should be complete uh, as of this past week. If not, first or next week. There's a couple of situations that um, need to be in place before the military can take its action. Now, the other part of this is the people, the military. Although they have the civilian authority given to them by uh, the uh, last completed project where the states became individual nations, uh, that's only a part of, the, part of the picture. The other part of the picture is the voice. And I'll give an example of that. Do you like being ripped off? Uh, 
you know, cold pointy fingers going down your pants to get your money. If not, then I will suggest that you get involved with this simply because that is what the banking and federal government system has been doing to everybody. Just that simple. So if you don't like those things, then um, I suggest that you uh, start hooking up in groups and get prepared to be able to uh, offer statewide, not just a county or small group or small town, but statewide uh, opinion of, hey, you guys have been ripping us off. That is not cool. We want our money back. This sort of thing, when you have enough people saying so, uh, it will bring the system to a halt. This is what needs to happen. The predication or uh, requirements before an action are very simple. You have to have everything in place. And I don't know of anybody that wants to pay federal taxes. That goes to a corporation. It does not go to our treasury. It does not go to this country. It goes to the central banking system which is privately owned. That means it's you're putting money, taking food off the table, things of that nature, to enrich somebody that's already so wealthy they can't really stand it anyway. This is the problem. This is one of the problems. The other one deals with all these rules, regulations, and gobbledygook that they decided to uh, foster on us. Unfunded mandates. The federal government says, "Thou shalt." Then to go along with it, you've got these uh, illegal. Uh, executive orders I have uh, done some checking and uh, it goes back quite a ways there are not very few if any executive orders that can be used on a legal basis simply because they have not been done correctly people start need to start learning how these things work so they can take this down to the local level and tell their mayor that uh, no uh, Mother Nature doesn't uh, clean up the leaves in, the, in, you know, in the forest, so there's no reason for me to clean the leaves up in my yard as such. And you're not sending uh, local workers over to do that for me and then charge me for the privilege. It doesn't work that way. These go to property rights and things of that nature, and these things need to be brought to a head. They need to be done. This needs to be done immediately. Uh, yesterday would not have been soon enough to my standards. So here you go again, localization. And the idea of the founding fathers was to give the people the control, not a banker, not a politician, not some lobbyist, not somebody with money. And we need to, we need to fix that. So uh, this is what we are intending to and uh, taking actions towards doing. And that's the answer to that question. Let's go to the financial for a moment. Um, Russia shut down their stock exchange for about six hours or so. In that, I can't believe that they just had a malfunction. Is there any chance that they were switching to uh, a new global system? Hello. Is there any reason that Russia might have been changing to the new global financial system? Uh, you cut out in the middle of that question. Um, Russia's stock exchange went down for five hours. Is yeah, there any way that they were switching to a new global system? Well, they are realigning some of what they're doing, but... Uh, the problem is a person by the name of George Soros. Uh, he couldn't affect a direct takedown while he was in the country. Apparently, uh, there was an arrest warrant issued for him for financial terrorism. Um, the second part of that goes to the fact that you can do these things from a distance if you have people who will act as your agent. Soros has been known for that for a long time. I'll give you an example. He owns both political parties. Now, if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what does. Uh, quite simply, they shut it down for self-protection. They had opened it back up, and certain people went in there as agents, starting to cause extraordinary changes in valuations. This is the manner in which you create a bubble so that the thing, when it does pop, it goes down to a lesser value than what it was before. So instead of paying... Um, 
a reasonable price for something, you end up picking it up for pennies on the dollar. Same thing that the Rothschilds did to uh, Great Britain. Exactly. It's the, you know it's a standard operating procedure. Uh, buy low, sell high. Well, if you buy low or on an emergency basis, and this is anything, companies, people, whatever, uh, it can be stocks, it can be bonds, uh, you name it. If you can get something on an emergency basis, you always pay less than the value. Uh, generally, it's less than uh, 50%. Now, what Soros was looking for was about 30 to 40%, and he would have owned Russia. Now, if that does not un- give people the understanding as to what the man- why the man was uh, issued an arrest warrant, I don't know what could, but uh, that will give you an idea as to why it was shut down. They reconfigured it, and uh, they cleansed it in some ways of the capability of certain people to operate within it, and this should uh, put them on good footing. And that's the answer to that one. What about the U.S. and our stock exchange here? Because we know that they've been doing the same dirty tricks here. What kind of protection are we going to instill here so that people's faith in the stock market will return? Well, you have to remember that the stock market is uh, bogus in terms of its valuation. Um, the actual valuation right now is around 6000 now, that's going to shock people because it's at 13 or somewhere. Um, I'm going to say, remember what happened in housing. Uh, and in some cases, it's still happening. You have a little, you have an extraordinary adjustment, and that's what the word they use is. Um, and then you have things that are, that hold a certain value. Some go down a little bit more, some go up a little bit more, but it basically stays right around the general uh, value. The housing market today uh, basically is at its uh, more of a true value than it has been in a lot of years. Now, this is also true of what's called uh, paper investment. Real estate is supposedly a solid investment. Its physical uh, qualities say so. When you're dealing with paper, and that can be currencies, bonds, uh, credit default swaps, uh, stocks, doesn't matter. You're dealing dealing with something that is valued according to a formula made up, and I, I'll say that again, made up by people who think they uh, understand what the real value is. Any stock will have a uh, multiple times earnings. Well, that means that that earnings might be three, four, five. The earnings will be projected that this particular whatever it is uh, will maintain a certain amount of value for a specific period. In other words, the earnings will continue to come in. The problem with that is that it is all paper. It is all fictitious. And you have to understand the difference between uh, the true value, and this is after all expenses and debts, uh, this is no multiple. Then you get to the true value of a stock. You've got some that are uh, valued. I can give you an example of six hundred dollars. There's a couple of them in that area. The actual true value of those stocks is around two hundred, if that. This will give you an idea as to the false presentation that you're getting. Um, you'll find seasonally adjusted numbers be that uh, employment, unemployment, whatever, they seasonally adjust so that they don't have to tell you the truth. They can play with it any way they want. This goes back again to valuation. The uh, printing of money deludes or dilutes the value of our currency. When they print print $500 billion and send it off to Timbuktu land or the Eurozone or wherever it might be going, This causes the value of our currency to decline. Now, if you look at what's called the uh, dollar uh, exchange or valuation uh, charts, you'll find that the dollar is somewhere around 70s, give or take. Uh, They were about 72 to about uh, 78. I think I find it extraordinarily interesting that if you create 500 widgets, it has a certain value. When you create, go ahead and come back because it was a popular sale and you make a million of them, well, then it's not a collector's item anymore. And there's so many of them out there that 
you see these ads on TV, uh, 1995 and that sort of stuff. Uh, the same thing's true of currencies. You make a million, you make a trillion, you make a bunch of them, the value of that has to go down because you're dividing by the number of the current currency available. Okay, same thing's true of stock. When a stock splits, they're diluting the value. That's just like adding sugar or something to water. You don't see the sugar anymore. Well, the value does the same. All right. Hey, Drake, we're going to go ahead and take a uh, uh, break here um, since we are at the top of the hour. So, uh, Dave, you got it, kiddo. Okay, I want to uh, one for, uh, go into the um, housing that you brought up. Um and that leads me to the straw man account, which is supposed to be in our name and tied to our birth certificate and people paying for their homes with their straw man accounts. Um, can you explain if the straw man accounts are viable, one, and number two, what about these people that are losing their homes that have actually paid for them? Well, now you're getting into a couple of different things, but... Uh, specifically, the straw man doesn't exist, and what it is is an equity issued according to your value. Uh, generally, it's around uh, three billion dollars. This goes directly to the Fed in terms of valuation upon birth. Consequently, they can uh, manufacture three billion dollars of money uh, that you get to be tied to and spend it any way they please. The other part of this is that you have to remember that because of the fictitiousness of the origins of these actions, this goes to the corporate government, okay? A corporation has no more right than Walmart or somebody else to uh, collect taxes from one. Number two, uh, they do not have the capability to legally operate, and I'll say that again, lawfully operate, as an entity where it regards a free people. This is the reasons for the work that we completed in another project and uh, the reason for uh, using our basic documents outside ideal of banking. The other part of this is that you have people losing their homes because they don't understand that they are actually issuing the credit to the mortgage holders against themselves. In other words, you are worth X amount of money. Uh, if you sign a paper, there's no transfer of funds. Or whether you get a loan or what, it's not transfer of funds. They go on a computer screen and change some numbers, and that's it. There is no value that moves. This is the uh, part of the Ponzi scheme that people do not understand fully. The um, premise of this is that the same way they can print money out of thin air, there's no back, they can also add uh, values to things. This deals with basic papers of any kind, be that currency, stocks, bonds, doesn't matter. Those things are intrinsically worth the money, worth in money value, the paper they're printed on, pretty much. Uh, doesn't matter whether somebody likes that or not. Now, the problem with this is that people have been playing the the freedom or uh, sovereign philosophy game with these accounts. Now, anybody that uh, pulls funds out of these accounts, they will come after you eventually. You might get in 120 days. When they come after you, uh, you're in trouble. You're going to get some time in federal prison. And you're going to lose everything, period. That's the way it's done. This is another part of the Ponzi scheme. They also make money when they put you in prison, so they're making money that way. And then you want to add to it. They just took real property that you acquired through uh, the use of their own system. So they are profiting like crazy off of this. Now, the other part is this. As the issuer of the credit, the individual does not owe, but the banks do. This is a part of the reverse uh, that they put in to cause us to think certain things. 
It's called brainwashing in some circles. It's called conditioning in others. People have been led down a rosy path that uh, when you apply for a loan, you're actually getting an intrinsic value when you're not. It doesn't matter what you're getting a loan for. It can be housing or whatever. As far as uh, fighting that sort of thing, um, there's several places you can go. Um, what's in your debt? Uh, it comes to mind. Um, the actor, what is that uh, site that uh, Terry's involved with? Um, what lies in your debt? There we go. You put that in your search engine and you'll come up with some answers. Now, she does not particularly handle directly things dealing with mortgages, but there are people there who do. Now, there's a whole lot of things in legalistics, in legal terms, that most average people are unaware of. Due to the bankruptcies that this country's had, and the first one was back in 1929, um, <laughs> we operate under what's called Unified Commercial Code. Everything is commerce. Nothing that we generate in this country in terms of value goes to pay our national debt. It goes to pay the servicing or interest on that debt. In other words, the interest accrued quicker and made the uh, original sum bigger at a faster rate than we paid against it. The uh, indebtedness, uh, as you can see if you look around, I mean, this is all online. Uh, you can see it in terms of uh, reports even on Fox News. Um, many people tell you that this is not possible to pay back. So that means that we are a creditor nation. We're all broke, and we don't even know it. It's been hidden, and it's been hidden well. So the straw man ideology, yes, it does have some legal valuation. It does have some legal ramification. But using the Unified Commercial Code as an international law, whereby all commerce is conducted within this uh, field of combination of understanding and enforcement, then everybody has to pay everybody certain uh, portions of bills when they're doing payable. So uh, it also outlines contracts, exactly their, their legal condition, the manner in which you can sign one so that they cannot say, well, you agreed to the contract, so this, this, and this applies when it's not written anywhere in the contract. And I'll give people a good example. If you got a driver's license, when you sign that thing, you sign up for each and every last regulation, rule, and law dealing with driving wherever you're at. That's not what the driver's license says. You just uh, don't know what you're signing. So you use UCC 1-308 called a reservation of rights. That means there is no implied contract. Now, if you want to start some stuff and you're paying federal taxes, I would suggest that you put reservation of rights on uh, above your name when you sign it. You will get a, a message back, I guarantee. You may not like it. Uh, so it would be a good idea for those who decide to do so to have a good lawyer. So that's basically the answer to that. It's fictitious, does not exist, and has been done simply so that uh, people can take your money uh, in a Ponzi scheme. Next question. With all the problems with mortgages and the banks right now, it seems to me like it would be very problematic and high drama to be purchasing a home at this time. So what would you recommend for people that are looking to buy a home at this time? Well, first of all, I'd make sure that the deal is structured correctly. I'd make sure that the thing is that the property they're looking to buy uh, is comparable to valuations done on properties similar to it within that area. Um, if somebody wants to buy a home, uh, we recently bought one, um, I'm not going to say that's the wrong thing to do. Now, there's a reason for that, and I'm going to give you a case study. It's called Iceland. The premier told the central banking system that because they had perpetrated fraud upon the uh, country, 
through their uh, inter- through their national debt, that that made the whole of it bogus, and they told them to eat something and uh, go somewhere, and uh, they ain't paying. Just recently, they forgave all mortgage debt. I want you to think about that carefully. But ahead of us in terms of the curve, in terms of the the same thing can be done here. The national debt goes bye bye. The other part is that mortgage debt, which is a perpetrated fraud Ponzi scheme against the people, goes bye bye. The third part of it is is that um, you go from a debt instrument, which is the Federal Reserve note you got in your pocket, to an equity instrument. Now, this is where you zero out the banking system. It stays that way for a couple of three, four days, whatever it takes, in order to take the financial power away from the bad guys and expose them because they're going to get really fidgety and come out of the office. The other part is that after these bad guys have been uh, taken care of, whether they're arrested or put out of their position or what it might entail, uh, there is a revaluation. This deals with uh, collateral accounts set to give value to countries. That means that your money all of a sudden goes back to normal. Now, my suggestion for this period of time is silver coinage that has silver value. They call it junk silver uh, because it's not pure. But you have an intrinsic value of like uh, 70 80% of the weight of the coin in silver value. So if you got a silver dollar, uh, you're probably t- talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% of the going price on the exchanges for silver. It's around 30 bucks. So uh, take 0.8 times 30 and uh, get rid of the zero. You got $25 in a silver dollar. You can survive on that. All of a sudden, the economy is going to make a shift. Your uh, Federal Reserve notes won't be as valuable as the silver coin if they take those reserve notes at all. And as I understand it, for a period of time, those things are not going to be of any value. Don't throw them away. The revaluation will reinstate them on an equity basis. So it will still have value. Small investors are not going to be hurt. Small businesses, people that got money in the bank, people that live off of this. During this period of time, the plan states that uh, your lights, uh, your water, Etc. will not be turned off. They will be tried, try to be maintained. Now this is, you know, it goes back again. You got to keep the bad guys from uh, chopping down telephone poles and things of that nature. But uh, you're going to have pretty much a normal, pretty normal life. They're not going to interrupt or interfere with it. You, most, a lot of people will be able to just go to work and not have to worry about anything. They won't see that much difference. Now the announcements. This is the part everybody's been wanting to know about. Uh, the announcements of all this happen at a particular time. When, the, when certain people are in a position to do so, uh, they will take a sweep. They will take all the people out from behind the people you now have in office, the financiers, the people that have been uh, being the uh, document runners and people like that all of a sudden are going to disappear. After that sweep's made, they make sure that they've got all the records they need to prosecute these people, and then people such as ourselves uh, will be given what's called notification to go into a green light status. That means we notify everybody and their mother-in-law about 24 hours ahead of the time that you have you get to see Bernanke get led away in handcuffs or whomever it might be. So you have to understand that there's a lot that goes into this. People who have not understood it or are not aware of what it is Go to our, our website, freedomrange.us, has postings and has recordings of these radio broadcasts. A lot of the questions are answered on there. Now, we're working on a Q&A section. I should be done with that today, hopefully. And it categorizes questions. I might have probably four or five questions that go to the same general area, each one being answered within the body of my answer. So you'll find you'll be able to just simply, before you ask the question, you go to that part, read through it, uh, and it should take care of concern. It should take care of uh, uh, questions. Uh, some of these questions that we've been answering today are repeats. I can tell you that. So, you know, 
Next question. Mm-hmm. Okay, what about the chemtrails? Everybody is very concerned about the aluminum, barium, serranum, viruses, molds, and stuff like that. They have 428 cocktails of chemtrails that they spray on us. Why can't we stop them? We know the airport that they're coming from. We know where they're located. Why isn't anybody going in and shutting these planes down? Uh, That's a good question. Uh, If everybody knows where they're at, here they are. Uh, Maybe if somebody went over and uh, uh, took a big knife and and flattened their tires, they'd have trouble taking off. I mean, there's a lot of ways to handle this. If uh, we can't get official action, sometimes the people have to take the action. And this has happened in a bunch of different cases where uh, they've got an old movie. It's not a long one, but it talks about a veteran who got together with a bunch of other ones and uh, took possession from the local authorities of ballot boxes proving that these people did not win. Now, that, that sounds to me like an honest, open election when these guys are sitting there and the state police, uh, oh, you got the boxes? Yes, we do. Etc. Uh, so, you know, it may not be legal to go flatten a tire, but it also might stop a chemtrail. Uh, people have to uh, figure out what they need to do in order to make these things cooperate. And I have made an issue of this through my contact chains and other people that they need to address this. This is, a, I feel, an emergency to me. And, uh, so far, there's been some action, but not to me very, uh, not close to enough. Uh, I'll keep telling them to, you know, do something, and hopefully, uh, at one point or another, you'll start seeing uh, fighter jets escorting these people to the ground, or shooting them down, or something of this nature. At least I'm hoping so. Um, uh, there's a lady in California who uh, uh, figured out the contracts, who was doing it, in the whole nine yards. So. <laughs> you know, and she's filed a uh, suit against them, uh, and I don't know of anything coming out of it so far. This is the part where uh, the standing government uh, <laughs> gets you in a court and supposedly can't win by playing by the rules, so they change the rules uh, kind of thing. This is the kind of corruption that needs to be taken out. So, yeah, I hope that answers that question. Well, the only problem about going and flatten their tires is that they have um, a special force, I don't know who it is, that's surrounding these airline camps. And so it would be just impossible for people to go in and even tamper with the airplanes. Well, I've heard a lot of stories about different things, but uh, uh, we'll see about how um, impossible it is to get in. Hopefully here in the near future, I'm trying to make a contact with uh, certain people who can get in. So we'll find out what happens. How about the Federal Reserve that got $16 trillion in uh, bailout money, which was supposed to go to the people and instead went to the banker's pocket? Are they going to have to pay that money back? Well, uh, recently you probably should have taken note on Divine Cosmos, David Wilcock put out the um, uh, report of all 12 central banks being leaned. Now, the way that these people had gotten their money was to either steal, leverage, or borrow against using them as collateral. Okay, these are the collateral accounts that I was talking about. They're huge. So any one of them would put the... Uh, uh, everything back in order in, say, our country, as an example. The uh, deal with the leaning is that, yes, now the central bank has to pay back all of those funds that they obtained illegally. So, basically, the uh, central banking system is getting ready to go bankrupt. Parts of it already have in uh, Europe and other countries. Uh, one of them was caught with their hand in the till, in China, and uh, they took everybody in the bank to jail and replaced it, realigned it, readjusted it, and it now operates uh, correctly. There's a difference. Uh, 
that central bank does not charge interest. It is a holding bank, just as the state's holding banks would have been had they been able to get those through. That's something I suggested about two years ago that uh, was tried in three different states and so far has failed. state's holding bank would hold all revenues, to include the Fed. On the bank uh, had seen to it that everything in that state was taken care of, then they send the crumbs from their table to the Fed, and the Fed didn't like that, so they were stopped. But, uh, yeah, the, the central banking system's got a serious problem. It's more serious, as you can see in Europe right now. you got uh, some 400 and 550, whatever, arrests, uh, resignations, and the thing about it is a resignation don't cover you. They come and get you anyway. You have perpetrated financial crimes against the people. You have violated the public trust. Uh, you have, in some cases, killed people, and in some cases created a gross treason. So the the charges uh, against these people will vary some. But uh, at least our country has a lot of FEMA camps waiting to be uh, occupied by people like that. So, you know, I hope they enjoy their camping trip. Next question. Same. Spain um, just announced that now they're having problems and they're part of the dark cabal fingers, if you will. Um, and they're saying that they're going to a cashless society. Does that mean that the New World Order has taken over there or does that mean that they're going to a barter system and then they're going to create an authentic, more constitutional-run monetary system? Uh, now, that's going to be a good one to see, and I would suggest people watch that simply because the um, what happens there is going to give an idea as to what the uh, adjustments that they're looking for in terms of making things right is going to be or the manner in which the bad guy hide it. It could be one of the two. So uh, you can add um, Switzerland, or excuse me, France, um, Let's see here, France, Germany, um, let's see, Spain, France, Germany, Spain, Italy, uh, the Netherlands, uh, Ireland, and eventually the U.K. to the list of people that are going to have financial problems. So um, you have to understand that uh, the shift is in process. It does take some time to, in order to accomplish this. This is why I say that people should get ready to um, not get toilet paper delivered to their local store. That may not happen. They're not able to send food uh, of varying types, but toilet paper may not be on a survival level or consideration. So it might not be a bad idea to stock up on that sort of thing, meds, you know, things that may not be available. Um, the uh, the change, you're going to go through several changes, and I'm not sure yet uh, how far they'll go in terms of the uh, uh, individual situations that you're talking about as of yet. It, it's uh, that's a thing that's in progress. You got you should be watched closely to see how it comes out. I think it may come out favorably. If not, it'll be addressed again. It's not. Right. They're not going to quit. Okay. Well, Drake, All right. it, it seems we're going to be going to break here in, in about three minutes. Okay. Just a quick question before we go. Um, is there any benefit to a chemtrail that we are unaware of? Depends on what's in it. There are chemicals. There are uh, mixes of things that can remedy most of the problems that those things have created. It also cleans the at can clean the atmosphere. And us, we're infested with all kinds of gobbledygook that we should not ever have had. So there is, there, they can be beneficial if used correctly with the correct ingredients, yes. Mm. Because I think there's something that, yeah, we need to take into consideration. Mm. Okay. Can you tell um, us this really fast before we go? I sent a list. To you just a few moments ago. All right, states I'll say it when we come need, back. The states that still need people uh, would be Arkansas, New Mexico, New Hampshire, Vermont, Oklahoma, Wyoming, and yes, South, South 
North Dakota, Kansas, Iowa, and Delaware. Thank you, Deatra. Now we're going to go to break for four minutes. People relax. We'll let you know when you can call in and let you put questions in the chat room. We'll be right back shortly. Back. We're not back yet? No, we're back now, folks. And go ahead. You've got the mics and the spotlights and the guns and all yeah. that other stuff. And the coffee, too, Drake. Bye. <laughs> awesome. Okay, we are back. And, uh, Drake, uh, we have a question that came in on Skype. And uh, that uh, is, if you could clarify your position on the uh, Iceland Parliament who did not erase all mortgages? Yes, I will. Uh, there are certain um, portions of those that were uh, obtained by or from uh, certain entities that cannot uh, forgive the debt. Um, and if you want to know about that, go to uh, go check Iceland out and find out the particulars. There are several different particulars, and to keep this short, uh, that's the best answer I've got for you at this point. Right, right. Hey, um, if you don't mind, I kind of, I was, I was sitting here thinking about this, and a lot of people are talking about the mortgages and yada yada. Uh, you know, people losing their homes, and you know, I, I know I see constantly, you know, um, advertisements here and there in magazines, uh, you know, flipping through television channels once in a while and whatnot uh, about purchasing uh, foreclosed homes, and my honest opinion, now again, this is just my opinion, and you can put your spin on it, Drake, um, is anybody who goes and buys these foreclosed homes, in my opinion, is only aiding and abetting in the theft of the property, and um, yeah, that's just the way I see it. That's about as close as it gets. Um most of the foreclosures have been uh, ruled as fraudulent, and most of the property is to be either returned or a compensation made to the original owner. So it may not be the, good, the best idea in the world to go investing in these things. Now, the only uh, entity that you are assisting when you do so is the bank itself. The bank writes those properties down to zero and gets what they can for them. So, exactly. That's basically where that's at. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that was basically just my two cents. Muggsy, if you want to go ahead and start up with your questions again, because I know you still have a whole bunch of them. All right. Um, we have a situation with the um, central banks and all the liens, and it seems like it's reason to believe that these guys are going to be going belly up. Is this going to be then an opportunity for the states to take these buildings and implement their own state banks? I would definitely suggest that they do so, but the problem is that you're talking on a state level, not a national level. The difference is that the localization that I have been uh, stressing comes into play here. Um, first of all, you have to you have to realize something. According to what the original setup was, there wasn't much of a federal government. So you can expect most of what we got now to go in the trash, be done away with, turned off, however you want to look at it. That's going to leave the states primarily responsible to themselves within certain limitations. Those limitations should also offer that uh, after the expenses uh, for making sure that the bridges are okay, that the roads are all right, uh, and other things of that nature are taken care of, do they have an extraordinary extra or excess amount of funds? If the people are willing, they could share those funds. That's similar to what the Fed does in the revenue sharing deal. They could share a portion of those funds with a state who does not have the population nor wealth in order to take care of what they've got going on. This would then uh, facilitate uh, or help uh, just about everybody um, that I'm aware of. And you have to remember now, the other part of this is you have to understand that these collateral accounts are greater than our national debt. 
Now, you've also got private accounts as well that are going to factor into this. This country is an extraordinarily wealthy country in many ways that people are not aware of. So you have to understand that uh, suddenly, uh, instead of having Obama and Bush standing in the way of the release of these collateral accounts, the collateral accounts comes into play. Bingo. Then you're talking jobs, and I'm not talking about a dollar ninety-eight at uh, some burger joint. Something kind of something that's along the decent level. You also have to remember that the prices and value of the money is going to change, according to an equity system versus a debt system. So, within all of this, you're going to have some extraordinary changes. You might be able to be considered wealthy uh, at fifteen, twenty bucks an hour. You might be considered uh, well off at ten. Uh, this is this remains to be determined according to the way the financial system works itself out, plus the rest of the uh, things that go into this. So it's a lot of them, and that should answer that question. What about states coming up with their own monetary system, but yet each state honors each other? Is that something that would be viable for our future? I don't see a problem with that. Um, um, my suggestion, if somebody decides they want to go that direction, would be to have an American dollar printed on one side, uh, state of Texas or wherever they're from on the other. Then you've got a national currency. It just happens to be from the state of Texas. Now, the problem that you've got is that, as I said, certain states have more wealth than others, and um, it's prohibited to have an exchange rate between states. So that, uh, until that's addressed, uh, and that's legislative and requires the people to do so, until those things are addressed, um, I don't know that they, uh, they're not prohibited from having their own currency, uh, but the only currencies that are uh, recognized constitutionally as gold and silver. So, uh, and I'm telling you right now, um, a few dollars in silver is heavy, and gold is even heavier. So, you know, the paper currency idea, I understand that, but it needs to be backed, and this is where the equity comes in. So these things can be addressed, but uh, you're going to have to have a meeting of the minds in order to understand that uh, it might be better to have X dollar or greenback or whatever it may turn out to be uh, that is the national currency that it's exchanged equally everywhere. Uh, this way you don't uh, you don't put an, an undue stress on somebody uh, because they're from a different state. That's basically the answer. To that. What about uh, Nasara? Uh, from what I've researched, that was a Rockefeller program to put us into uh, the New World Order system. It was a little carrot, if you will. What do you know about Nasara? Well, basically what you just said, that it is uh, bogus, and I'll tell you why. Uh, because it came from Rockefeller, it's part of the cabal, which means that it is not intrinsically going to be good for anybody. Now, that may take some time to come out as it has taken 200 years for them to get us to the situation we're in now. So uh, I would be leery of those ideologies. Now, it may be that certain portions of Nasera would be equitable or would be uh, correct in terms of application uh, with the people. Now, I'm saying with, okay? You're going to have two sides to this. You're going to have something that some people will disagree with, some people will be for, but that solves the problem of both, that they can live with it. The inconvenience is not as great as not having a dollar in our country, as an example. Now, Sarah, um, uh, you have to go into Keynesian uh, philosophies on uh, monetary systems before you'd understand that. That's also online, and I recommend people look into it if they want to understand that. And that's basically the, an the answer to it. You mentioned the bridges, and I was wondering, um, we know that they, the dark cabal drilled holes in the cement of the bridges to put explosives in, um, and there was supposed to be teams Hello. going out and removing them. 
Mudsy, we're not hearing you again. Uh-oh, the bridges. Yes. Um, that there was holes drilled in the cement and explosives were put in, but there was supposed to be good guys going around and removing these explosives. Have they done so, or what is the update on that? Uh, they're still working on it. There's a lot of bridges. Um, you have to understand that these things, uh, when you... When you use the ideas that they're using to put these things together, what you have is a complete explosive device that is activated by radio waves. So you either have to have an extremely strong transmitter to do so from a distance, or you have to be able to activate them with something strong enough to penetrate the uh, concrete or whatever they're in um, at closer range. So... Um, the other, uh, the other part of it is, is that um, a lot of these things can be deact, that can be activated and cleansed. In other words, there is programming involved, and if you negate the programming, it will not set anything off. So, the idea, uh, basically, I understand what it was. Now, the situation has transformed from that because it's being addressed and addressed rapidly to a system where. You have uh, small sleeper cells, just like you do in uh, most terrorist groups, who have explosives in hand that are capable of taking down or severely damaging infrastructure, be that a bridge or whatever. And these little groups are supposed to go out at the time they realize that the uh, cabal is done and uh, take care of these things. This is where the people's eyes come in. This is where the militias come in. The police and the... And the um, military are going to have their hands full doing their job. So it's going to be up to us to assist them in terms of deploying. Somebody wants to come over and put bombs on a bridge, well, what are they going to do when they start getting shot at? That sort of remedies that. Uh, so you got, you're going to have some problems. They're not going to necessarily be uh, handled by the authorities you might think that uh, would handle these. What you're going to have is you're going to have a lot of people just regular citizens who have been deputized and authorized to make sure that they don't do that thing. So, yeah, the um, last I heard was that the uh, programs were going along very well and that all those uh, sorts of problems had been pretty much addressed. Um, they've got, uh, they developed a uh, special technology for uh, finding the thing, so most of them have been found, no matter how well they were hidden. So, um as far as I can tell, everything's uh, looking good so so far. And that's it. What about China coming over and building and stuff? Should we be concerned with that? And why aren't we using people from the United States? Oh, that's a good question. Now, um, one of the things is that uh, each individual nation, as I understand it, as this shakes out, is going to be responsible for their own. So... Um, you want to get a job, uh, high steel right now pays pretty good money. So does uh, concrete work, so does uh, other things. Um, you're going to find that uh, there's going to be a lack of capable people. Uh, by that, I mean people correctly uh, trained to hand handle infrastructure repair. Um, an engineer can describe how you go from an old uh, I-beam and rivet bridge to one of the more modern uh, flex steel types of um, conveyances. Uh, you can combine the two, and uh, for a great uh, period of time, one supports the other, supports the other. It's sort of a combinational deal. And these kinds of things can be done uh, a lot less expensively than closing out a whole bridge, rebuilding it. Uh, so... The, uh, there's a lot of different ways to go about this. Um, it's not going to be something where everybody's remaining unemployed. The idea is employment, okay? The idea is a combination of manufacturing, uh, agriculture, and infrastructure repair or building as needs. And so this is where you have collateral accounts, you've got private accounts, all this stuff starts hitting, then you're going to have uh, jobs that will pay you uh, plenty of money. You will be you will be in a good situation. So 
That's it. What about Area 51 in Dulce, New Mexico? Are we going to be able to visit those, and are they empty now? Uh, portions of 51 are empty. Uh, a couple of the others are empty. Uh, a lot of the stuff that was out there has been used uh, in terms of uh, moving them into tunnels, tunnel systems, and underground bases. This was your uh, top-of-the-line technology re uh, reverse-engineered from a supposed ET craft that crashed. I've known a couple of people that worked there and uh, got some of the skinny on it. And uh, basically, at the time that I got in touch with them, uh, back in 99, uh, they were in the process then of relo beginning to relocate. Now, these things have been spread all over the country, so you're not going to find a concentrated area as such uh, today where you have uh, research into these sciences. The people that uh, had the idea of reverse engineering was two reasons, or was for two reasons. The first reason being uh, military superiority in terms of weaponry. The second part of it was that the advanced technologies would give them the capability of uh, uh, having uh, all the electricity they wanted for as long as they wanted it kind of thing, uh, that sort of uh, application. So they could live at the underground bases. It was not a problem. So as these underground bases are cleaned out, then that technology goes with them to go along with that. Also, the personnel who thought they could hide out there uh, are getting swept up as well. And the, the closest uh, description of that is a giant sweeper being stuck down the air pipe and slurping everybody out. And uh, this includes office desks and whatnot. I guess there was some hollering about it. Um, where they went, I have no idea. But I do know of uh, five or six that are just absolutely clean all of a sudden. The door's open. Um, there's several in the southwest that you can go and just walk right through if you want uh, in terms of uh, Area 51, that's not going to be uh, secure. None of this will. They're supposed to out all of the information. This is part of a transparency in governance where you do not keep secrets because you don't need to. And that's a big difference from what we've had before. I hope that answers can you, that. Can you address the radiation? Because they keep talking in the news about the radiation coming over to the U.S. and Canada and using it for fear-mongering. What is your perspective? The reports I've gotten is that the radi radiation and radiation levels are real. The problem with the reporting of it is that you cannot read the type of radiation with a standard a Geiger counter. This is a different type of uh, radioactivity in terms of the manner in which it presents it both with any and with uh, its physical uh, manifestation. So when um, when you make air radioactive, you do not necessarily blend extra um, things like uh, titanium or something with the air. What you do is the origin of the atomic radiation adds electrons to the uh, molecule. That's a part of it, and that's one form of. The other one is where it can add either a neutron or proton to the uh, center of the, the atom. Now, <laughs> sometimes it's protons, sometimes it's neutrons, sometimes it's uh, electrons. This is the variation in terms of real general sciences. So the problem is that the radiation is at extraordinary high levels, and it's already blanketed the United States pretty much, and it's headed toward Europe and beginning to affect uh, England at this point. The, um, the other part is that... Um, there are things that can be sprayed through chemtrail applications that attend to these things. It removes, it absorbs the radiation. Once that radiation is absorbed, there are biologics, and I'm talking about little critters that, uh, you know, if you put uh, tap water under a microscope, you can see them swimming. Okay, there are critters of that nature that uh, eat these atomic isotopes and neutralize them in the process. So you got a double spray, and that would take care of it. Um, I've already contacted, when this first happened, I contacted some people and uh, was told to shut up. 
there's uh, other things that can shield what uh, shield the problems that they've got that are fairly simple to do um, and only take and can be done fairly quickly. Uh, you'd have to rotate the personnel during the application and then dispose of the vehicles used. But other than that, it actually would contain it. They refuse to even listen or entertain the idea. Um, an example of treating pollution incorrectly is corrects it. They try to tell you it's harmless as dishwater, but it does funny things to uh, genetics where you end up with uh, uh, two-headed turtles, two-headed shrimp, things of this nature. Um, there is a biological treatment. And when that first happened, I got in touch with a company that makes this stuff and could not make, could have made enough to correct the situation organically, and it would have been corrected by now. There would be no excess oil in the Gulf. We, but Drake, they, they wanted to kill the Gulf, so the pollution continues. So yes. Drake, you know our own Dr. Will has developed and put together products that they they will eat this radiation as well as as the toxins and what that is put in uh, that's dropped on us with the chemtrails and all. Exactly. I just thought I'd remind you of that. Exactly. Um, that's one of the reasons that uh, I consider Will extremely highly. Um, I contacted some people when it first happened. I found out that uh, we were contacting the same manufacturer that he gets his products from. One of them, and so I look at that. I looked at that, and I said, "My goodness, you know, here we go with the best stuff there is I know of." Mm-hmm. And this guy's putting it out on the market. So, you know, this is there, there's a thousand million silly ways that these things can be remedied, but no, but the cabal, <laughs> the bad guys, the people who want to reduce the population of the planet, have decided that they're going to try to resist this as far as they can to the extent, to the greatest extent they can, so that they can actually uh, reduce the population like they said they were going to. Right. We've got uh, another a couple of things involved in this that uh, deal with organics that uh, are uh, really nasty. So, you know, there's there's a lot that goes into this. And if people want to take a look at Agenda 21, they'll find population reduction in the whole nine yards. And it's amazing people would uh, think in those terms, but that's what they're doing. And they are trying to implement these things presently. That's part of what Japan is all about. If you can't get them one way, well, you breathe one molecule of this stuff, mm-hmm. and it causes cancer. Just right. thing, unless you're taking what you're talking about with Will's products, which I am taking, and I can allude, I can guarantee you they're head and shoulders above anything else I've ever had. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the, you know, <laughs> the the, um, the idea of how uh, many details are involved in all of these plans is uh, mind-boggling. You start getting into this and actually understanding what's going on and what they're doing and the different ways they're attend, trying to attend to the to how to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, it really messes. It really will mess with your head. Uh, you're gonna need a cold beer or something afterwards. I guarantee. You. <laughs> right. It's a shock. To the oh, I know. I know. I know. Okay, Muggsy, go ahead with with your questions. I just needed to put that in. Catholic versus Vatican, um, a lot of people that are Catholic are concerned that the Pope will tarnish their beloved religion, and there's many good facets of the religion, but yet the Pope and what he's done in his charges is going to tarnish that that piece of the religion that people dear. What are your comments about the separation of the Vatican and also would the establishment yeah. of the vet be uh, handed up. over to the people? Would, would it be handed over to Mugsy, the people? Mugsy, we didn't hear the rest of that question. Uh, the Vatican being handed hmm. back to the people. I wonder if we uh, we lost her again. Now, uh, people are saying they can hear her where we can't, so I don't know what's, uh, what's really going on. Uh, Drake, basically... Um, I guess what is the you know what is what is the take on the whole thing happening with the uh, the Catholic Church and the Pope? Uh, you know he 
the the actions that he has made, they're afraid uh, will discredit uh, the Catholic belief. Well, uh, first of all, I don't see the Pope as being the uh, I don't see the Pope as being the uh, center of attraction here, and I'm going to explain that. Uh, According to the church doctrine, it states that the Pope is the holy man directly uh, in contact with Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ, stated in the book, is the intercessor between man and God. That doesn't say anything about the Pope. Now, to take this a step further, I'm going to tell you that the Pope's guilty of things that even uh, go beyond the pedophilia and other uh, concerns that the church has. I would suggest that the church should cleanse itself. This should be done, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, uh, by the membership. You know somebody's dirty, you can get them out of there. Kick them out, let them go find a job at Mickey D's or someplace. Um, and preferably not around children if they're, if they're nasty like that. Okay, uh, the other part of it is, is that then the membership the individuals who um, are clean. Now, I'm going to say something here that you know needs to be said. Not each, not all of the church officials are dirty. I want that to be perfectly clear. The ones who are left after you clean house should be your new leadership, and they should be uh, watched closely. Anything funny reported, they should be changed for someone else. Just that simple. But the belief uh, that Jesus Christ was real, that he was here, and that he heads all churches, and they'll say, ooh, Muhammad. Well, who knows? Who knows? Was that his cousin, his brother, or was it maybe Jesus Christ in one of his manifest forms? When God tells us, we'll know. So in the meantime, I would suggest if you wish to hold, this, hold that faith, then hold it dear. Make sure that it is the pure, pristine bride that is necessary to be presented to everyone, to include God, that there can be no objection to it. And in the process, then you come out with what you what was supposed to have been all along the uh, wonderful uh, experience of people being able to come in who've never met God before, and you get some idea where they just might be able to. And I think. Right. Basically, where they're at, and I don't see anything wrong with it. So, okay, yeah, I agree with you, uh, Dave. It looks like we are once again at the top of the hour. If you want to go ahead and then do our break, all right, all right, Welcome folks, back we're back. Good. But I got something to say. We're going to open up the questions. We're going to open up the phone line. Get one question, and if it's already been answered, we're going to tell you it's already been answered. We're not ready right now, area code 510. So uh, with that, and we're going to take a break on the half hour again. Deatra, Drake, Sam, you got it. I'm quieting off. All right. Um, as, as Dave said, guys, we're going to one question Per caller, that's it. We're not going to elaborate, not a bunch of discussions, and Dave will be screening the calls. If, as he said, if the question has already been answered, it's already been answered. So, um, Muggsy, Drake, go ahead. And I guess we'll take our first caller. Drake, did you want to address the Norway where you got your, or Iceland where you got your information? Hello? Hello. All of a minute, of a minute caller. Uh, first, information that I'm not allowed to release. I've said this, stated this before. Some of the inside information cannot be released, and the forgiveness of mortgages was uh, first touted uh, on these um, news blogs um, and whatnot. Hold on that, one uh, second. Do you want to address the Norway where you Five one zero. Turn down. Button. Turn down your speakers, please. Okay. All right. Now, two things. I deal with some of the principles and all this, and the information I was given on uh, Iceland. Uh, some of it is privileged. I have not been given authorization to discuss it. A certain amount of the mortgages have been forgiven. 
according to where they were originated and the types of monies involved. Some of these are what are called dur bars. Now, dur borrowing is where you go to a du jour bank or a banking system that is du jour loans the money. This is a different system than the corporate and federal or reserve banking system totally. Those are valid mortgages. That's a big difference. In other words, you actually uh, have reverted from the artificial creation out of thin air of cash by making a number appear on a computer screen to actually exchange a valuation. In other words, the mortgager puts out the cash to cover the mortgage, and you pay that mortgage back. That's basically the idea, okay? It is not artificial money. It's real value, and that's the difference. This is why some are and some aren't. And, yes, I get my information from uh, several sources. Uh, one of those, I do read what people say so that I know what is being put out. The second thing is that if I have a question of it that I have no concept as to what an answer might be, I run it by my uh, sources. These are the people who are principal in the takedown of the central banking system. So some of that information that I'm given, they have requested that I don't share it yet. Uh, at the time I can, I will. So uh, there's going to be a, a bit of a press release hopefully coming in about a week or so. And that's the answer to that. Callers? Hello? Hello? Okay. Hi. Um, my wait only minute. question. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Eight one five. You called in first. What's your name? Where you're calling from, please. I'm Jack from Illinois. Hello, What's everybody. your question? My question, uh, Hi Drake. Um, you had talked about the sweeps uh, going now only to the level of governors, and you had talked about um, being able to more or less point out at the local level who the local officials are that need to be removed. What I'm wondering is that that could become a witch hunt. Um, how would that work? Let's say that I've got people on our county board, or our, our county board here, that are corrupt. Um, who would I contact, and then would they then be investigated and then potentially removed? Uh, that's sort of a combinational question. Yes, it is going to be somewhere in the governor governor's level as to the federal sweep. The second part of it is left to the individuals. This is the individuals within the state, the individuals within the, within the county. If the individuals, uh, as private citizens, can come up to uh, real evidence, and this real evidence can be bank accounts, there's a lot of ways to do this, where uh, a guy's making, uh, say, forty grand a year, and all of a sudden he's got fifty in the bank. Uh, there's a, there's something funny in there. So uh, the call would be to address this in a legal manner before what's called citizens' truth councils. This is one of the ideas being bandied about, and these truth councils would be similar to a grand jury in terms of you present everything you got or you are removed from office. That's the choice. The presentation, then, is either uh, good or bad. You can either, you can, it'll either show that the person, there's no way a guy making 30 grand's got 100 grand in the bank. There's no way that somebody all of a sudden comes up with 50 grand when they're making 40. Unless they can show where the money comes from, then you know that that is dirty money, that they've been bribed or paid to do certain actions. These actions, then, are uh, can become clean. You pay the money back to the people, for one thing. Number two, uh, you tell exactly who it was, and that might help mitigate whatever charges uh, come about from this in terms of sentencing and things of this nature. Uh, who would you report to? Uh, your, your neighbor. Uh, you need to have a concerted effort of several people who would go around as the witch hunters, as you men mentioned, uh, looking for uh, transgressions of the public trust. Just that simple. And this is the, the ideology of localization in terms of both support and being able to take direct action. 
Well, some Next of them question. are pretty obvious, but we're not necessarily professional investigators. You know? and, All right, um, thank you, 815. Thank you. You've asked your one question. 510 area, where are you calling from, please? I am calling from Berkeley, California. And your name, please? My name is Lisa. You may ask one question. Hi, Drake. My question is when? Uh, address that, and that's basically the situation. There are also the instead of just a sport, uh, they take that sport to the point of killing people. That's the reason for that. My name is Lisa. Next question. That's it. Uh, five seven three. Turn down your speakers, please. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Okay. Um, I have some. Um, uh, all right. This Muggsy. Yes, it's me. Okay, okay, okay. Your voice came across a little different this time. I have a frog in my throat. Um, I read an article recently about 30,000 drones over the United States now, and I was wondering if you could comment on that. Uh, yeah. Um, the uh, surveillance, uh, security, and whatnot has been being tightened up. The uh, basis for the existence and freedom of the people involved with the bad guys has been jeopardized extraordinarily. They want to keep as much of an eye on people as possible. So consequently, uh, that is a, an inexpensive, supposedly inexpensive way to monitor people, to see whether or not you got a group of citizens running around with guns in the woods or... Uh, oh my goodness, this guy's selling raw milk or whatever the quote crime might be. And, uh, they would like to be able to address these, uh, in the same, uh, ridiculous manner they've been addressing everything else. Uh, the only problem is, is, uh, that they have lost their financial, uh, leverage, uh, over, over the period of time that this has been coming out. And due to that fact, uh, pretty soon you'll see the drones getting parked. They won't be able to afford the fuel. So you got to remember these things are coming about, and it does take time to address them all. So drones, chemtrails, all of that sort of thing sort of fall into the same sort of categories. These are not good things, so therefore I would uh, suggest uh, that, they're, that they probably will be dealt with. Uh, drones, I understand, are easy to be taken down. Um, the Air Force practices on this sort of thing all the time. So you've got that consideration. Now, some of these drones may be used to monitor the bad guys. So you got the two-way street again. Some good, some bad, you don't know. All of these things will be outed. Uh, I'll say this again clearly. All of these things, the fun and games, all the stuff that's been going on, is going to be outed. This is going to be an educational channel kind of thing uh, that will be run 24-7, and it will give the basis for a combination of both government structure, the secretiveness that they have uh, promulgated so that uh, they can keep us in the dark and feed us uh, horse manure, um, and uh, keep us uh, slaving away and making money for their private uh, corporations. That's the answer to that. What about shutting down the Internet? They just passed a bill. The federal government is trying to shut down the Internet, and they're also trying to get people to sign up on their website for something that seems very malicious. Do you have any comment about the Internet and the longevity of it? I understand that that's supposed to take place in June. Anybody that doesn't uh, comply with governmental control is supposed to be shut down. Uh, I would say that's outside, outside of the time frame where these people will be removed. So, therefore, I don't see it happening. Now, I will tell you that the government has had the capability for quite a few years to turn the Internet off if they so chose. Now, the problem with that is that the government uses it extensively. So this is the reason for sign up to be a good guy on our side. You comply with everything that we think is uh, righteous, including every word out of the mouth of uh, <clears throat> Obama, etc. And you do not say anything nasty or question anything the government does. And all these sorts of things supposedly go along with this agreement. Uh, the other part of it is is that they put in tracking cookies. Uh, those are installed... Uh, 
so they can find out exactly who you're talking to. If you decide that you want to keep somebody a secret, you got a problem. The secrecy is to our advantage at this point. And yet, here we are on the radio talking about opening things up. Well, the opening of things is reliant directly upon the people. The more people can get the word out that they do not have to put up with these things and that the paperwork has been done to give the civilian authority to the good guys in our military to take the action, then the citizenry can operate under uh, certain military constraints that are found in some militias, uh, military units, uh, and join forces and actually accomplish the goal of setting us free once again is the ideology behind all of this. Uh, I had to buy a pickup truck to haul the target around that's been painted on my butt. So that might give some people some idea. I feel that I'm in, uh, in a very uh, extraordinarily dangerous position uh, outing these things. But it is a situation that needed to be done. The Pentagon, through chain of command, had specifically requested that I do certain shows. Uh, you can find those recorded on uh, Freedom Reigns. And um, the uh, situation is that uh, I signed a, a thing called uh, uh, an agreement or uh, service uh, agreement that uh, obligates me to serve this country. It doesn't have a time limit, and, and by that I mean there is not an expiration date. It simply states that I am to uphold and protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Well, I feel that we've got an extraordinary amount of domestic enemies, and I mean enemies of the people. This is where you get uh, turn off the Internet. This is where you get things that are not uh, legal but lawful and done to you anyway, whether you like it or not. All of that goes. This is why these people are desperate. This is why these people are doing anything they can to uh, cause problems. One of those things is they're stepping on our broadcast. Uh, they don't have a lot of options left. Consequently, they are in uh, a lot more serious trouble than people realize. And these things are coming a lot sooner than people expect. So get ready, because we're going to have to get her done. And that's the answer to that one. All right. Uh, caller from 573 area, your name and where you're calling from, please. And your yeah, one this question. Is Go ahead. Hmm. Hello. Hello, Ralph. Your one? <coughs> your pardon yeah. me. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Your one question, please. Okay, Greg, since all of the mainstream media is owned or controlled by the cabal, uh, when this action um, breaks and the green light is given, will 100% of the mainstream media, that is the TV, radio, newspapers, will they be taken over again? Yeah. Or will some of them still be in control uh, by the cabal? Be... I, heard your, I heard a word there. Go ahead. Okay, my understanding is that mainstream media will be uh, freed uh, of the uh, control. That means that some of the people that you've been hearing say things that uh, you know ain't right are all of a sudden going to be able to do the about face and tell the truth. Uh, this includes each and every last of your major uh, news networks. Now, something that's happened recently is that most of these news networks have lost... 50, 60, 70 percent of their viewership simply because they don't get the news. They don't find out what's going on. They're turning to people such as ourselves because we're not only telling the truth, but we also are bringing them something that's uh, realistic that they can look forward to. Uh, and we will also report, irrespective as to who don't like it, the truth about situations and what really happened. And that's the di big difference that's going on. Now, I'll say this again. They plan to take control of the mainstream media and offer truth. This will be a part of that education program. So everybody needs to be aware and ready for that. That's the answer to that one. 
Drake, I've got a Drake. I've got a question here. It says, "How will immigration into this country, America states, based on reuniting with a spouse, be impacted by these changes?" Well, first of all, there's going to be a change in immigration. Um, immigration, as it is now, is what's called uh, legal. You're either legal or you ain't. And um, I'm going to suggest that there's families here, uh, <laughs> whether they need to be reunited, as in bringing grandma or a spouse uh, across the border, whichever direction they uh, feel they need to go. Um, there, there's not an allowance in the laws that govern this for that particular thing. To me, it would make great sense if those people who have been living here and leading productive lives uh, were to have an accelerated program. That means they start from scratch. They get a green card authorization to be here, etc. Uh, if there's a registry involved, they're registered. You start it round zero. I believe that's seven years or something along those lines. Um, it used to be, and I don't know if this is still valid in terms of the law because I haven't looked at it recently, that an immigrant uh, was allowed two years without paying taxes, federal taxes, and part of this new scheme would be that you just go ahead and pay taxes as you uh, should have been doing if you hadn't been, uh, and don't worry about what might be owed in terms of uh, five years of this or that. Now, you got to remember, federal taxes are bogus. So that's going to be addressed. How soon? I'm not positive. I know the IRS is due to be shut down, so the collection of those taxes is going to change tremendously, along with the shutdown of the Federal Reserve. You're going back to the Treasury. Steve Brink. So this, this, this in and of itself would solve a, a, a great majority of the problems with immigration. Uh, if somebody wants to uh, temporarily come up here and be a picker, Work temporarily in construction. I think they should be allowed to do so, only in a perspective that people can uh, uh, better uh, associate with, better support themselves with. Uh, a penny a pound for uh, tomatoes? I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, a nickel a pound? I don't know about that. Uh, I would suggest maybe um, ten cents a pound. That would be more along the line of an average person who's not used to that type of work, being able to do it and uh, live. Um, not the greatest thing in the world. I've picked oranges and tomatoes and whatnot, and it's hard work. I have great respect for the people that do that. My goodness. Uh, you know, but immigration, no. You should not separate a family uh, for any reason. Uh, adjust the immigration policy and law so that it allows for family unity. Um, that's something that should have been done years ago and was not never uh, addressed. That's the answer to it. All right, let me say something, Drake. When you people call in, give us your name, where you're calling from, and your one question, and please take your answer off the air. I'm getting flooded here today. <laughs> 815, you're next. John from Chicago. Drake, what do you know about this NATO summit that's coming up May 18th? through the 20th in Chicago. Take your answer off the air, John. Thank you. That one's already been answered. I know it's due to be take, to take place and all that, and uh, you'll have to uh, refer to the recording, apparently. Hello? Next question. Thank you. Okay, we ready for the next caller, Drake? Uh, Dave. Hello? Uh, that's, yeah, that's uh, 203 area, I think. Hi, this is uh, Debbie from Connecticut. Um, wondering how the unlawful corporate... Uh, not hearing court, Debbie at all. How will the unlawful corporate county courts go down? Will it okay. Be up to, but, hello? Hmm. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes, yes. go ahead. Uh, 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 how will the unlawful corporate county courts go down? Will it be up to us to sue and take them down that way? Okay. Um, Thank you, Debbie. Please take your answer off the air. 
Go ahead, Drake. Okay. The um, simplistic of legality goes to common law. Everything uh, re revolves in common law around two things, an injured party or property damage. Anything outside of that is not something that needs to be necessarily adjudicated at all. The uh, issue of a court is that the courts will come out from under admiralty and other laws and come under common law and will be addressed uh, in much in a much more equitable manner than things have been addressed before. People who have been convicted of crimes that do not have property damage or injured parties probably will be released. Okay. Um, Dave, we are at the bottom of the hour. Do you want to go ahead and take the break? Yes, uh, in... Uh you see, that was a 707 area. 505, will you just wait a minute? We're going to take a short break because Drake needs a cup of coffee and so do I. All right, we're back. Now, let's get something a little straight because it's a little bit hectic here right now. We, when you, when I, I can only take them two callers at a time. If you get deleted, come on back in. I have two callers right now from the 505 area and the 504 area. 505 area, you're first. What's your name, where you're calling from? Please end your question, and please take your answer off the air. Dave, uh, my name is from Alabama. 504 area, 504 Dave. area, turn your speakers down and wait your turn, please. 505 Dave. area, you got it. Okay, Dave, 505. Hi, Deidre. Hi, Dave. Uh, Hi, Drake. Yeah, uh, this is Vicki from Albuquerque. Drake. Yes, can you hear me? Right. Go you ahead. We're not hearing anything from area code 505. Okay, I'm here. Oh. There you are. Okay. Drake, um, this is Vicki from Albuquerque. Could you address the NORAD um, May 2nd through 9th military exercises throughout the U.S. and Canada, please? Uh, yes, and I'll say it's a two-way street again. It could be to our advantage. Thank you, Vicky. You're welcome. I'll address that very simply, that it could be the two-way street again, where you have people being uh, put in the correct positions. You could be having a readiness exercise for deployment so that uh, the good guys can know that they have troops available to assist Uh these are supposedly uh, training exercises to see whether or not the specialty units can handle what they're tasked to do. Uh, these are not uncommon. Uh, I live close to a national forest, and they're jumping in and out of there all the time doing stuff. So the uh, training exercise is supposedly real. It's on their web page, uh, and it supposedly happens March 2nd through the 9th. Uh, accordingly, the um, – excuse me, May – um, and uh, I think so far it's a training exercise, but it could be that they're getting ready to spring the trap. I don't know yet. When I get that information, everybody will know. Next question. Thank okay. You. Thank you, 504. Oh. You get one question. Uh, oh, you yeah, haven't answered. You. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I apologize. Uh, no, yeah, no, it's, it's the area code 504's turn now. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I just apologize. Go ahead. Uh, yes, my name's Keith. I'm calling oh, here in the area 504 there. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm, my name's Keith calling from St. Augustine. I'm wondering about uh, what Drake knows about the uh, World Liberation Day on uh, May 5th. That's scheduled to go in the event. Thank you for your question. Please take the answer off the air. Go ahead, Drake. Uh, quite simply, um, that's supposed to um, be a uh, combination of both celebration and activity. Now, the, that combination, uh, from what I understand, is that the idea of uh, freedom 
uh, is supposed to be a celebration of what can be done to further freedom. This is one of the things that has come up in uh, what we do uh, from about 20 to 30 foreign countries wanting to replicate what we've done. Everybody wants their freedom. So as that celebration goes on, I'm hoping that they might uh, take a little cue from uh, what we've done and uh, be able to uh, implement their own programs using their own documentation, um, following similarly to what we've done in terms of uh, procedure. The procedure is valid under almost any circumstance. There's only a couple exceptions, and those deal with uh, antiques that uh, probably uh, won't become a valid question. So um, I'd say everybody ought to go out and celebrate their freedom because it's coming quicker than you think, and that's the answer to that one. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, do we have any yeah, I believe uh, 602 is the next uh, call. Yeah, d- d- uh, Dave, thank you. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but don't breathe in your phone. Uh, you got it. Uh, Drake, how about the college funds on all levels of uh, government that are supposedly held in these, or revealed by the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report? I didn't hear anything but the last very little bit of that. Would you yeah. say your question again, please? Uh, yeah, Drake. I was wondering about the CAFRA funds. Um, Am I on? Yeah. Yes, you're on. Yeah. Would you okay, t- the comprehensive annual financial report funds that are supposed to be uh, way up there at all levels of government. Would you take your answer off the air, please? Okay. Um, the problem is that most of those funds have been stolen, and stolen by the uh, present banking system. The um, problem is, is, that, is that those things will have to be refunded by those who stole them. In other words, everything down to their underwear goes, house, boat, cars, whatever it takes. They will take everything that those people will have anything to do with. The next part of this is that you have what are called collateral funds or revaluation funds that will come in at a strategic point so that the uh, economy can continue to at least have functionality. During that period of time, after the functionality has been established, there will be the change between the monetary systems that we have along with the combination of um, a reset, as I stated, from debt to equity. And then in process also, you have to remember, the uh, origins of most of the funding that has been used in all countries comes from either theft, leveraging, or leasing uh, reserves that these people had no right to. That has to be paid back. And so consequently, um, you're going to have a um, reset, and that reset may not come out as uh, the same same exact type or name of funding. It may be different. So we've got to wait on that one. Next question. Uh, next question comes from the 707 area. Would you give us your name where you're calling from, please? Hi, this is Kathy from Lakeport, California, and um, thank you for taking my question. It is what will happen or what should happen or what should people do with their individual retirement funds that are locked into the stock market like the U.S. government bonds? That's going, that's going to be an interesting uh, position. Hang on a minute. Um, Kathy, take your okay. answer off the air, please. Thank you. Okay, that's an interesting question for two reasons. First of all, the small investors, and by that I mean small investors. I'm not talking about J.P. Morgan or the other crooks involved in this. The small investor, small business, the individual, okay, uh, you will not basically lose your valuation. It will be brought to zero. Don't mistake that. I'm not playing with that. This is what is called for. 
okay, after a period of time, a period of wait, it will be revalued. This includes bonds, stocks, etc. Now, the stock value probably will be different because of the change in the valuation of currencies. And short's going to end up with something real instead of a piece of paper that says so. And that's basically your difference. Now, don't worry about the lights being turned off or, or that sort of thing because, as I understand it, according to the plan, the portion I read on finance stipulates that they're going to keep the uh, electricity running, uh, water on, that sort of thing. The phone will work. And as I stated before, you'd be able to go to work probably and not even notice a difference other than the fact that there's going to be some news for a change. And the news is, hey, guess what? We're free. And he really did it. And this is what the people should be looking towards um, in terms of uh, being assured that they are not going to be taken to the cleaners again. So go from there. Next okay. question. 801 area. Hi, uh, my name is Rod. I'm from Salt Lake City. Um, first of all, thanks for taking my call. How are you, Drake? Um, I've, I've I've got a question. Um, ben Fulford and uh, David Wilcock have in the past have talked about uh, what they call a prosperity package, uh, where funds would be uh, distributed to practically every person on Earth. Uh, it, to your knowledge, is there some? Is this is this a real thing? Is, the, is would it be actually a check that would be? Uh, sent to us, uh, how much do you think it might be, or, or do you think it, it would be something like distributed to schools and roads, something for us to use, rather than something that comes directly to us? And again, thanks for, for letting me on. Thank you. Okay. Two, two, four, eight, you're up next. Okay, thank you. Okay. The um, <laughs> the, situa the situation on on, um, on finance is twofold. A lot of background noise. Turn your speakers down, two four eight. Okay. Basically, basically, in terms of finance, there's a combinational deal here. A majority of funding okay. will go. To will go to infrastructure. The secondary portion of it will go to the people. Uh, the, this has not been made absolutely clear yet as to amounts and things of this nature. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Next question. Uh, 719 area, you're up next. Your name where you're calling from, please, and your single question. My name is Donna Taylor. And where you're calling from? My sticker's down. My sticker's down. All right, 248, you're up next. 719 okay, is up right one. now. Okay. Um, I have a son that was injured at Columbine, and we've been politically exposing the truth worldwide. And now they have him, uh, they've been trying to drug him and keep him in a group home. State so is trying to keep him uh, in that situation. Is there anything I can uh, do about that? I do have an attorney coming out trying to help me, John DeCant. You ever heard of him? Uh, yes, I've heard the name uh, slightly. Mentioned. Yeah, he he wrote the Franklin cover-up, and he's coming to Colorado next week for three days. He's um, from Nebraska. What the pro the problem is this? Okay, um, when people um, um, assign things to other people, they lose the rights to what they've signed over. That can be mm -hmm. another person that a person is responsible for. And mm -hmm. what needs to be done is that those types of things, when um, um, either inconscionable or questionable, should be um, experimented with. Uh, this does not mean that everybody in the hospital is going to be um, an experimental guinea pig. What it means is that medications to alleviate certain things uh, should be adjusted according to mm -hmm. what that person can handle. If it's a pain medication, it should just barely dull the pain. It should not mm -hmm. take the pain away entirely so that the person does not damage themselves further. In uh -huh. the case of um, causing a person to mentally 
be incapacitated, then they probably are on the wrong sort of uh, medication. Well, no, I'm Medi saying, sir, we exposed the drug company. Okay, go ahead. Hold on a minute. Here's the other. Here's the other basic problem and the main issue. The main issue is that each and every last one of these quote uh, big pharma companies producing ma the majority of the drugs, be they prescription or over the counter, all none of them, and I mean none of them, and you can go to the drugstore and look. Say cure. They can't use that word. They address symptoms only. Some of the side effects are worse than the disease itself. So exactly. consequently, what you've got Drake, hang on a second. I've got to drop the stream for a minute. I'll be right back, folks. We've got a little problem with the stream. I'm going to fix it. I'll be right back after about five, ten seconds. There, everybody should have, right. everybody should have a fresh stream. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Drake, sure. and then we need to kind of wrap this up. Okay. In order to answer the question about Big Pharmaca, um, I would suggest that you get in touch with uh, Will Spencer on one of the shows that he does because he has things that cause your natural system to cure the problems and or assist okay. with that and or provides a direct curative. Now, a curative does not cure. It causes cure. There's a big difference. In short, right. you get a cut on your hand, it can heal up. It can heal up faster with some of the things that uh, Mr. Spencer puts out uh, rather than some of these pharmacological things that you find at the drugstore, just that simple. The best mm -hmm. thing in the world is to find your natural health and promote that so that you have a preventative situation. This will help mm -hmm. tremendously. Large mm -hmm. pharmaca and large uh, agriculture are in trouble because they're going to be uh, either put out of business or broken up. That's part of what this uh, entails. Okay. Well, I have a son that was shot at Columbine, and he exposed the drugs that Eric and Dylan were on. And I believe this is an attack from the government on us because we were advocates against the drugs, and we sued the drug company. We were on television, radio, exposing the truth why Columbine happened. And now they're drugging my son. Okay? So uh, this, uh, to me, is more of a political matter. What I'm going through, because Mark... I need to be on these drugs, and they did it just to hush him up. There's a whole lot about Columbine that hasn't came out yet. The truth. That's the truth what I'm hasn't came to, out yet. That's what I. That is exactly what I'm trying to express. The problems are exactly. created not much politically, as you'd like to think, as it is financially. Pharmacology. Yeah, they need the money, don't they? Don't they? Pharmacology. Well, if you have a chance to, yeah, if you have a chance, look up ColumbineFamilyRequest.org. And Mark Taylor is my son's name. Up, everything on there. Okay, Call my family request. So thank you. God bless. Thank, thank you. Thank you for calling in. Dave, mm -hmm. we can take one more question. All right. That's from the 248 area. Go ahead. Give us your name, where you're calling from, your s and your one question, please. Okay. Kathy from Michigan. I'm not sure if it was asked before, but since they're going to be running out of money for the drones, will they be running out of money for these planes spraying the chemtrails? Thank you. Exactly, and I already answered that, and yes, they will be. Uh, anything that's left over that is not uh, for the people will be addressed in such a fashion that they'll be all grounded. Very simple. Uh, chemtrails, obviously. Chemtrails don't go good on your hand sandwich punch. <laughs> right. right about that. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. All right. Thank you. Um. Well, yeah, folks, I'm, we I'm have sure. come. We've come to the end of another three-hour session. It has Wait, been. Dave, Dave, yes. Dave, can I address something here, please? My dear, I've been you... watching the. Go ahead. Yeah, I've been I've been watching the chat room here, and I also look at comments on on the Facebook page, the emails we get, and you know, there's so many people. Well, what are you going to do to fix my problem? You know what the problem is. We need to work together. A couple, a handful of people are not going to fix everybody's problems. This is something where every person, every individual, every living, breathing human being needs to work together with their local communities. It's not something that's going to be fixed by just a couple of 
people. So I would invite everybody to please visit our forum on our website, freedomreigns.us, and link up with people in your state. Start a thread for your own community if you want, your county, whatever. This is what the forum is for, is for you guys to be able to unite with people from your state, your community, your county. And that's about all I've got on that, Dave. 